With me now, Stephen Saad, the CEO of Aspen Pharmacare. Thank you very much for your time, Stephen. Another six months down the line and celebrating good news on Aspenovax, the distribution to 55 different countries. That relationship that started way back with J&J, really bearing fruit for you now. But then, of course, you also have the supply chain disruptions that we're hearing from many, many C-suite executives that are plaguing their businesses from a procurement perspective as a result of COVID-19 and the impact of COVID-19, not to mention the geopolitical environment with Russia, Ukraine, adding to that pressure. So what can I say other than never a dull moment? <laughs> oh, I think you summarized it so well. Um, you know, in, in another time and another place, um, to have had great results that we've had with fantastic margin growth. You know, that's all the work that's in our factories to grow our margins and we get this great margin growth. We've got great earnings results. Um, and you get Aspenovax on top of that, that hasn't even impacted those results. You'd be sitting here and saying, sure, everything's so easy. This is gonna be, a, I'm, I'm gonna cruise into this, but you've, you've hit it on the head. Uh, Russia, the Russian Ukraine story, we just don't know where their contagion begins and ends. Does it go across Europe? We've got lots of factories across Europe, France, Netherlands. So there's, there's a risk there um, from a direct risk to Aspen, Russia. Russia is about 2% of Aspen's turnover and it's, it's sort of 2% of our profitability as well. No one wants to lose 2% of your earnings, of course, but that is the reality of, of where we are and you know, seeing what's happened with the exchange rate and what might happen. For now, I don't see, I'm not very hopeful of what's happening in the Russia-Ukraine crisis. Um, the, but if you say to me, what keeps you up at night? It's where you started. It's the inflationary pressures. Brian. When these, you know, you started to see 8%, 6% inflation in Europe. Energy prices are going up and this impacts everything. You know, in Germany, we, you know, like here you get your Eskom rate once a year. Germany was something similar. Now we get weekly rates, weekly. So, you know, your, your electricity changes, Bronwyn, from week to week. Your so container it's so load. difficult to, to manage your input costs if they are very, very hard. And, you know, areas with no inflation like Europe and wages that match no inflation, 1%, 2% increases. There's no way people are getting a 6 or 8% increase in their cost of living are going to be happy at 1% or 2%. So, I see a wave of inflationary pressure. Uh, I'm, we're very fortunate in Aspen in that we've, you know, our margins are starting to kick off and improve to absorb potentially some of this, but it's not sustainable. So you've also got to be careful not to overreact to price increases because we've seen fuel prices like this, well, I think it was 2008, I can't remember the exact year. And then, you know, they came back down. So you've got to make sure it's just a temporary bump at whatever, but it's certainly the one area in the business, if you say to me, what concerns me the most? It's, it's this global inflation. Um, and the risk of contagion from So with that outlook on global inflation and the outlook of contagion, as you put it, how are you forecasting for the next six month period? Or is it literally impossible? It's not literally impossible. I mean, of course we could be proven. We've, what we did was we built up stocks to the extent we could and so where we could, we bought in and we built up stocks to give us some cover um, over this period. But it's, and we've got, I mean, we are, we're nearly what we a couple of months into the next year, the next six months anyway. So we we're in it. We we sort of got a good good potential handle on this half. But you know you also want to see going beyond a half of where, where you headed. But there are definite risks uh, even in the half to to cost. But we have some positives in the business. We've got risks in Russia, of course. Um, in our commercial farmer, but our manufacturing business, which works a lot on uh, uh, committed demand. Um, we weren't able to get a lot of stock out in the first six months because besides cost pressures, we've had absentee pressure. So no one, no one, you know, whole shifts go. So one person's positive, you lose your whole shift and they're gone for eight days. So it's, it's really been, I can't tell you how challenging I've, in all the years, I've never had a more challenging operational environment, never had better results, but never had a more challenging operational environment. And as we said, never a dull day. It looks as though those challenges are, are set to persist certainly for the medium term. Just using your thought leadership status in the COVID-19 environment, many uh, saying this is the, the tail end of COVID-19, they're 
possibly will be additional waves, but they will be muted, muted in their impact given natural immunity and the rollout of vaccinations. Is this where you are at, Stephen? I think that's a popular opinion, and I think that's, and the popular opinion has been proved wrong over and over again from all the experts that have told us over and over. Um, but I, I, do, I do think that if we get the world vaccinated, that we stand a better chance. And that is why there's a, there should be a real commitment to getting what's going to cause a major problem, a really bad variant. Where's that likely to come from? It's likely to come from the unvaccinated. And where else is it likely to come from? Those that are the immunocompromised. So we are the most immunocompromised. We're the most unvaccinated people. They're sitting in Africa. Africa's got less than 15% vaccination rate. So I think we get the whole world vaccinated in Africa. I think that we can turn this from, this can become endemic. But, uh, you know, I'm so scared because we, the world's got people a lot cleverer than me get this wrong. But uh, I think we have reason to hope.